As I'm going to go to all the trouble of moulding and making a fibreglass copy of this bonnet, now is the time to think about do I want to make any changes for performance or improvement for styling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this Devo scoop on. So my first job is to glue this on and blend in the edges. There's a number of materials that you can use to blend in the edges. In the past I've used plaster or you can do the whole thing with body filler. The problem with that is it ends up being a fairly expensive exercise because of how much you use. I found it cheaper and easier to use drywall body filler. Um, it sets fairly fast and it's soft and a lot easier to sand. So I'll fill in most of the big gaps with this and then I'll put uh, a fine dress coat of body filler over the top of that that I can sand smooth. I've blended all the edges in, I've sanded it with wet and dry and now I need to seal the body filler so that the fiberglass resin won't eat into it and lock into it. The best thing to do that with is high quality floor varnish or decking varnish. Well I've painted the bonnet with two coats of lacquer, lightly sanding between coats and after the final coat. Remember the reason that you put that lacquer on is not to make your dye glossy but to seal all the uh, body filler and, and so forth so that the resin won't get in and lock into it. I'm now starting, if you like, the fiberglassing processes and the first thing that I'm going to do now is to put on a coat of floor wax or paste wax. You can buy fairly expensive um, waxes for this job but I find just a cheap floor wax from the supermarket will do the job just fine. Uh, some magazines and articles recommend that you um, put on multiple coats of wax, wax on, wax off and I find that totally unnecessary. I just put one coat of wax on, a really good heavy coat, and I don't even polish it, I just leave it. We're putting the wax on as the first of two steps to stop the fiberglass sticking to the dye. The reason you don't have to polish the wax is because when you put your gel coat on, it'll create enough heat to melt the wax anyway. You've got to make sure with any car panel that you're going to copy that it doesn't have any complex edges where uh, the fiberglass will lock onto it and you won't be able to release it off the, off the die. But with a fairly straightforward panel like this bonnet or a door or a mud guard, you're not likely to have the problems like that that require you going to a two-piece mould. After about 20 minutes the wax is dried. I'm now going to apply the second release agent which is PVA Blue Release. You can get it in green various colours. It's like a paint on plastic. I'll put this on and after about 10 minutes it'll dry and create a thin film that will help the fiberglass mould release right off this dye without any problems at all. The PVA is dry so this dye of the bonnet is now ready to have a fiberglass mould made on. Glass matting basically comes with either woven or chopped fibres. Chopped strand mat is best for general hand laying and it comes in various weights or densities. I always begin with a layer of 225 grams because it's flexible and conforms to crevices and detailed edges in your work. For most car work I then follow the 225 cloth with two layers of 450 gram matting. This yields the thickness that you want in your job, usually around two to three millimetres. You don't want to be cutting up fiberglass cloth once you've got sticky resin mixed up and gloves on. So it's best to cut the cloth beforehand, trimming it a couple of inches or 50 mil over the size of the job. 
Where your job is larger than the width of the roll of cloth, just cut second pieces and overlap them about 50 mil or a couple of inches. Cut the cloth at the corners or along ridges where it will need to where the cloth will need to spread out to conform to the shape of what you're copying. You can see now that that will spread out when I put the resin on it and I'll fill in those gaps with off cuts of cloth. Well my dies ready, my cloth's all cut and these are the tools I'll need to actually start laying up the fiberglass. First step being gel coat. So I've got some brushable gel coat which comes in either white or neutral to which you can add colour. You can add colour to the white obviously but uh, in this case it won't go red it'll go pink. Uh, the catalyst which is MEK, very dangerous stuff, be careful of that. A cordless drill with a wire whisk for mixing. A milk bottle cut out and a set of kitchen scales. If you don't put them in a plastic bag that's what happens to them. Paddle pop stick and lots of disposable gloves. Although it remains a little sticky, the gel coat must be dry. Check this by touch after two hours or leave it to dry overnight. With gel coat, you just paint it on and let it dry. But with resin, you have to give yourself enough time to put on those three layers of cloth, roll it all out and get all the air bubbles out. So don't put too much catalyst in and plan your day so that you're not pressurising yourself and having to rush to get things done in time. Well, it's been about an hour and a half since I put the last layer of resin and cloth on the mould for this bonnet. Now I have to trim the edges and you've got to do this at precisely the right time. If you try and cut them with a standing knife, uh, cut the edges too early, the cloth will tend to pull out of the resin a bit. If you leave it too late, you just can't physically cut it at all. The time to do it is just when you can barely lift that edge up. You can feel the edge stiffening and then the standing knife will cut quite cleanly without pulling any of the fibres out of the cloth. When the resin starts to lose some of its sheen and goes a bit dull, that's a clue that it's time to trim the edges. Thank you.